I really feel like I shouldn't have to do this video, but apparently there's people that think that Moonlight is cold. Now, usually these are the same people that also think the Earth is flat, even though those two things really have nothing to do with each other. I'm Skeptic Dank, and this is my video on cold moonlight, I guess. Do we not have, like, a title sequence? I need a fucking theme song or something. So first, let's talk about light. Visible light makes up a small part of the electromagnetic electromagnetic spectrum, which is divided into even smaller sections of different wavelengths that we perceive as the colors of the rainbow, with red being the longest wavelength that we can see and violet being the shortest. Now we could get into the other parts of the spectrum like radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, X, and gamma rays, but the one we're talking about is visible light. Our eyes are only able to detect light within this range. Everything you have ever seen was because some combination of these wavelengths of light hit your retina and sent a signal to your brain to be interpreted as an image. But the important thing here is that light transmits energy. As light is absorbed, it's transferred into heat, like things warming up in the sun or under a lamp. Light always adds to the energy of a system. Which brings me to the next thing we need to talk about, thermo thermodynamics. Flat Earthers love... Flat Earthers love to invoke the second law of thermodynamics when talking about the atmosphere incorrectly, but that's for another video. But today we're going to use the second law of thermodynamics to destroy cold moonlight. The second law of thermodynamics describes how energy systems seek equilibrium and how they flow to reach that equilibrium. When something gets colder, it's losing thermal energy, not gaining coldness. For something to get colder, that thermal energy has to go somewhere, like into another object or just radiating off into the atmosphere. Just like you can't add emptiness to a flask, you can only subtract liquid, and that liquid has to go somewhere. So what if there was cold moonlight? Why is it that we can see it with the other, with the other wavelengths of the visible light spectrum? Why is it that we can take its spectroscopy and see the wavelengths of light from the visible light spectrum that are in moonlight? Probably most importantly, if moonlight makes something lose thermal energy, where does that energy go? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed or go somewhere else. So this brings me to my experiment. I know flurfs are hella picky about doing your own research and doing your own science, so I went out and bought an infrared scanner like the one Nathan Thompson says to use for the cold moonlight experiment. Now when flat earthers do this experiment, they tend to just take one measurement here and one measurement here either under something or sometimes it'll even be on a completely different surface like pavement or grass or those things can affect the reading. So I wanted to isolate the variables for this experiment. So what I did was I performed it over three different days. One on a night with no moonlight and no sun because night. That's how that works. Then the next one was on a sunny day in direct sunlight. And the third one was on a night with moonlight. Now all of the readings I took were taken on packed dirt. Because that is important. It has to always be, you know, it doesn't matter which, but it always has to be the same type of surface. If, if it's on packed dirt, they all have to be on packed dirt. If it's on wood, they all have to be on wood. If it's on stone, if it's on asphalt, if it's on grass, don't do it on grass. Grass is too inconsistent uh, to really get a precise reading. The point is they all have to be on the same kind of ground. So then what I did was I had the open part of my yard that would be in direct sunlight or moonlight or no light. And then there was also a shadow from my house being cast into my yard. And this is because a lot of times when flat earthers do this experiment, the, the shaded part that they test is underneath something. And the problem with that is remember how heat has to go somewhere when something gets colder. Now at night, when the air is colder because the sun's not out anymore, and the ground is losing heat that it gathered from the sun. 
that heat that is radiating out of the ground and in the atmosphere will get trapped underneath the underneath the covers that I have set out. This is the same thing that keeps you warm when you were when you have a blanket over you. It's because that covering over you is trapping the heat from your body instead of just escaping away from you just keeps held against you. Then in the lighted part of the yard I put just uh, <clears throat> an upside down kiddie pool uh, as an opaque cover and then a glass bowl as a transparent cover. So why the transparent cover? Well, things that are transparent allow light through them. And, but if they are dense enough, they might also resist heat from escaping out from underneath them. If you have something where the energy coming in from light that's not being blocked is coming in faster than what it can escape out of the more dense cover, then you get the greenhouse effect. Now the greenhouse effect is what keeps greenhouses warm. It's also what makes cars in the sunlight child cookingly hot and our atmosphere can also work as a greenhouse cover. Which is why the planet is literally on fire right now. But if we have a transparent cover that's allowing moonlight in, well, that should make some sort of anti-greenhouse effect where it would get even colder underneath the transparent cover. Also, per the suggestion of a Mr. MC Toon, I also tried focusing both sunlight and moonlight underneath a magnifying glass. Now, if a focused beam of sunlight from a magnifying glass gets much hotter, then a focused beam of moonlight should get much colder, right? And now for the part you've all been dying to see, here is my cold moonlight experiment. So to start off, we're going to do a control with... Uh no moonlight or sunlight. As you can see, the ground is about 70 degrees. And underneath the transparent cover, we're getting about 74 and some change. Then we're going to look underneath the opaque cover. And there's kind of a plan the way here, but yeah, it levels out at about 74. And the ground, again, looks about 70 to 71. So already right here, the uh, you can see what causes the misconception of cold moonlight. Um, even though there is no light out right now, it's warmer underneath the covers. And that's because when the Earth loses heat, that heat has to go somewhere. You can't add negative heat. You can only lose heat. So those covers capture that heat that is being lost from the earth that it's caught from baking in the sun all day. You see here we have a sunny day and in the shade that is uncovered we're looking you know 60-65 then it gets up into the low 90s in the sun but then we go underneath the transparent cover, and it's you know a few degrees hotter, 101, 102. Now that is because of the greenhouse effect. When the transparent cover allows the sunlight in, it traps the heat then that is absorbed by the ground, and it just lets that heat build up underneath the transparent the transparent cover. Um, but now underneath the opaque cover, it's a little colder. Now, it's a little cooler than in the direct sunlight, but it's warmer than in the uncovered shade from the house. You see, low 90s down in the low 60s in the shade. So this next one was done in moonlight. Uh, you can see the time and date there in the configuration of the sun and moon. Um, I'm up here in Ohio. So this is just to show the uh, configuration I had there. Because unfortunately you can't see very well in the, uh, in the video where I take the actual readings. But as you can see the moonlight is here. Uh, 
um, it's coming down this way and shining on the opaque and transparent covers. But then we have the house right here that allows a shadow uh, slightly to the left of me. And we're going to start out measuring the moonlight on the right, 58, and the shadow on. See, it's a little, a little bit cooler in the shadow from the house. Moonlight, shadow. Um, so next, we're going to go to the transparent cover under the moonlight. Now, if moonlight is cold and this glass creates a greenhouse effect, then it should be much colder underneath uh, since the sunlight made it much hotter underneath the glass. If it's allowing the moonlight in, shouldn't that make it colder underneath the glass? But no, it looks like it's about four degrees warmer than the ground. And then we're going to look underneath the opaque cover. And that is also roughly four degrees warmer than the ground. Oh yeah, that was checking in the... Alright, so here I'm trying with focusing a magnifying glass. Um, since when you focus the sun in a magnifying glass, it makes things much hotter, as you'll see here. You know, it's kind of hard to balance both, but... Uh, you can see towards the end it gets really hot because the organic material inside the dirt actually started igniting and smoldering a little bit. And then you can see my dog kind of trying to help me there. Wanted to, he wanted to do a science too. Alright, so now, right here, it's a little bit hard to see. This is a focused beam of moonlight underneath the magnifying glass. Now if the sunlight makes the focused beam much warmer than a focused beam of moonlight should make it much colder if moonlight is cold. But as you can see, it measured about a half a degree warmer in the spot from the uh, from the moonlight. And that's all I got for the moonlight experiment. So as you can see, moonlight is not cold. If anything, it is slightly, almost negligibly, warmer than the moon shade in the video. And it really looks like the misconception of cold moonlight is about how heat is trapped underneath something that is covering the ground. But here's the thing, Flat Earthers. You don't need cold moonlight for Flat Earth. We can talk about Flat Earth in another conversation. Whether or not moonlight is cold doesn't actually have anything to do with the shape of the Earth. Now what we can tell from this is the people who are intellectually honest enough to look at the data and see that, okay, moonlight isn't cold. It's kind of a dumb idea. If you have any integrity, you'll stop parroting this point in debates and stop printing it on your cringy propaganda flyers, Nathan. And here now, I submit my findings to peer review. If you dig any issue with this experiment, my challenge to you is try to replicate it. See if you get different results. If you take any issue with the methodology, think that maybe there's some kind of other phenomena that could be explaining this, do your own experiment and isolate that variable. I did my own experiment like flat earthers are always saying to do. If you don't like the findings of this, you better come at me with some evidence to back yourself up. Thanks for watching, Homo Sapiens. I am Skeptic Dank. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one, which I am planning on a Kent Hovind debunk on the supposed irreducible complexity of the Bombardier Beetle. Really should go to fucking theme song, though. Skeptic Dank! Oh, yeah! Fucking dope.